Hi there, today I'm going to be talking about the new Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master and comparing it to the original Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master. I've used this original lens as my primary workhorse for both my personal and professional use for the last couple years, and I picked up the new one a couple months ago and have been using it extensively since. In this video, I'm going to be taking a little bit less of a technical approach to comparing these two lenses and really looking at the practical new features introduced with the new version and hopefully helping you make a decision on if you're looking at purchasing one of these two lenses or making an upgrade like I did. If you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know I'm a big fan of standard zoom lenses. And if you're interested in seeing my full review of the original 24 to 70, I'll have it linked on screen now. And when I use this new one for a little bit longer, I'll make a review of it and I'll have it linked on screen in a card right now too. But I'll start off by saying the reason I made this upgrade wasn't because there's anything particularly wrong with the original lens. I love it. I had a few gripes about it, which I talk about in my full review. But ultimately the reason I made the upgrade is because in the last year, I took over half my photos on this lens for my professional work mainly. And it just, if there was a component of my kit, I can make an upgrade to, it would be upgrading my standard zoom. So I did so and purchased the new lens. So I've been very happy with the upgrade, but it's not because the old lens isn't functional. It's a great lens still. As I said at the start of the video though, I'm going to try and keep this video pretty subjective and share my opinions about these lenses because if you're going to look on paper at the sheer technical performance between these two lenses, the new one is objectively better across the board. There, there's no question there. The new lens is better than the old lens. So I'll just be running through the key differences between these two lenses and sharing my thoughts on the improvements and how significant they are. Starting off though with the most obvious difference between these lenses, that is the sheer size difference. The new Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master comes in at 191 grams lighter than the original lens with a weight of 695 grams, whereas the original is 886 grams. The new lens is also 1.7 centimeters shorter, coming in at 11.9 centimeters, whereas the old lens at its shortest length is 13.6 centimeters. Even though, relatively speaking, this size difference isn't that big, in practical use, they feel and handle quite a bit different because of the weight distribution within the lens. A lot of the weight on the new lens is shifted towards the back of the lens. So when you mount it to your camera, it feels much more balanced within your hand. It doesn't constantly tip forward, whereas the old lens pretty much always felt as though you had like a kilogram weight on the very tip of your camera, constantly pulling your lens down, which was obviously a little bit annoying on the smaller Sony bodies, particularly if you're carrying this lens around all day, whether it's just on your hip on a hike, or if you're having it in your hand a lot at a wedding, it can just like physically cause your hand to cramp just because you're always kind of holding the camera up. Whereas with the new lens, that issue's almost eliminated entirely. So it's quite a nice improvement, even though on paper, they're not that significantly different. One notable similarity between these two lenses though, is the fact that they both share 82 millimeter front filter threads, which is both a pro and a con because realistically, if you owned the old lens, your filters were fit on the new one. However, I really dislike 82 millimeter filter threads purely because the rest of Sony's GM lenses usually have 77 or smaller millimeter filter filters. So you either need to buy all new filters for these lenses or have step up rings. And it's just pretty annoying to have to go through all that. So really it's fine physically. I guess they had no choice but to continue making it 82 millimeters, but it's just an inconvenience if that's not a filter size you have. 
Another key similarity between these two lenses is the fact that they both lack optical image stabilization. From Sony's perspective, this is a non-issue because all their sensors now have stem sensor stabilization. However, depending on your opinion on Sony's sensor stabilization, you might not love it all that much because it's objectively not the best on the market. In my opinion, it's kind of a non-issue because I don't rely on the sensor stabilization all that much. It's nice to have, and if the optical stabilization would have added more weight to this lens, it's a feature I'm okay without. So. I don't really care that it's not there and it's probably for the best for the weight. Coming back though to how the lenses handle differently, the new lens has a few new features. The most obvious of which is the aperture ring on it, which you can either choose to use or not lose. And it also has a lock on it so that you can actually disengage it. There is a new programmable button on the top of the lens. It still has a manual focus toggle and the button on the side. But the most obvious difference between them is the fact that there's now a zoom toggle on it to make it either tight or smooth. This kind of replaced the old feature on the previous lens, which was this little lock on it, which either would stop you from being able to zoom or allow you to zoom. I found this feature to be terribly inconvenient because you basically had to use it. Otherwise, over time, this lens would have a bit of lens creep. So you often were engaging it when you had it down like this, but the problem was it's another step that you had to perform whenever you were pulling the lens up to use it, if you were having it on your side. Whereas with the new lens, even if you pull up the camera quickly, no matter what, you'll be able to use it. And if you wanna make it easier to use, you can disengage the toggle. Over time, I do question how this toggle will wear in, uh, I found on older Sony lenses that had toggles on them, they get a little bit loose over time. So hopefully that's not the case with this one. And considering it's a GM lens, Sony has usually pretty good build quality. So I don't think it will wear out, but that's my only real concern here. Objectively speaking, the locking system was quite annoying to use and this new system is better. So I like it, but it is a very significant difference on how these lenses handle and the new ones better in that regards. Otherwise, when it comes to the build quality on both of these lenses, they're both extremely good. The original lens was absolutely superb. The weather sealing on it never gave out. It always felt real nice and smooth and the external materials didn't tarnish to the point where the lens mount is still basically polished. So. Even despite heavy use, this lens held up very well and I imagine it will continue to do so down the road. And the new one is basically the exact same. It's built very well, the weather sealing seems good, and I have absolute confidence in its performance. So there's no significant improvement here, but I didn't think there was room for any improvement. So yeah, it's great. Moving on to the internals though, there's a lot of differences between these lenses considering the Mark II is a new design from the ground up. The most significant change isn't necessarily in the glass though, it's the autofocus system. And I honestly didn't know how good the autofocus on my Sony A1 was until I used this lens on it. It's just ludicrously fast to the point where it's almost unnecessarily good. This is really difficult to articulate necessarily in video how good the performance is just because it's something that you can really tailor to your needs. You can have it in fully auto with the wide focus, put it in zone, tracking, whatever you want, this lens is going to perform exactly how you want it to. It can be as snappy as you want or as smooth and everywhere in between. But the thing is, it's not like I had any issues with the old lens, even though it's slower motors inside here and was moving heavier glass probably, it's not like it ever really let me down. I, I was always happy with the smooth transitions and just the accuracy that it had. So it's like taking an 85% hit rate up to a 95% hit rate. Is it a necessary improvement? Not really. Is it welcome? Yes, but is it worth making the upgrade for? I think it depends on what you want. I did make the upgrade, but to be honest, the autofocus wasn't the reason I did that. It's just really nice to have and I'm excited to continue to use it. It's certainly a luxury, but it's not like the old lens was bad. A minor difference is that the magnification ratio has improved with the new lens, going from 
0.24 on the old lens to 0.32 on the new lens, which isn't a huge difference, but the best part about the change is the fact that the best magnification on the new 24-70 is achieved actually at 70 millimeters, which is a welcome difference compared to others on the market in this kind of standard zoom lens range where it's often achieved at the minimum focusing distance which is really nice just because for everyday objects, 70, to, 70 millimeters is a comfortable distance to be, to be away from them, that you can get like a nice perspective, close up of them. So perhaps if you're shooting a wedding or just documentary work or ad work, the new 24 to 70 might allow you to not have to pull out your macro lens and just get away with using this lens for everything, which is very convenient. So it's a welcome change, but again, very minor, but it's worth considering that it's it's better. <laughs> when it comes to the aperture, there's yet again another very minor improvement in the fact that the new lens has 11 aperture blades, whereas the prior version had two less at nine. This should result theoretically in smoother out of focus areas in rounder bokeh balls, as well as having more points on your sun stars. And I've gotten rather fixated on the sun stars in the last month. I've had a lot of fun with it. It's certainly a fun feature. I have yet to see the real differences in the smoothness of the out of focus areas. This is mainly because I never had an issue with the old version of this lens. I really liked the out of focus areas it caused and it just looked good. So with the new lens, I expect great things, though I can't say I've noticed a significant difference between the two lenses thus far in my testing, but I'm excited to try it out more in the future and I'll be sure to report more about it in the full review of this lens. One of the key marketing features Sony touted when they first released the Sony 24-70G Master was the flare resistance because of the coatings that they had on this lens. And it certainly did maintain contrast in challenging situations and had pretty good flare kind of control. However, it wasn't hard to get this lens to flare and I did find it to be very pleasing and I got very used to working with it. However, it wasn't perfect. And over the years, Sony has changed their workflow and improved it and it shows in this lens. There is incrementally better performance and Sony says it is better. However, in my testing thus far, I've had a hard time really seeing a huge improvement. It, it seems to be more of a stylistic change more than anything and I didn't have a hard time getting this lens to flare. Though with that said, I've been specifically putting it in situations where they would be the most challenging. So I can't really fault the lens yet just because I haven't tested enough, but it's not like it's perfect and flare resistant, but no lens is going to be, particularly a zoom lens. That's a wide angle. So like I'm putting it in impossible situations and saying it's not perfect. So down the road, I'll be able to tell you more in the full review, but I can't really say there's a huge difference between these two lenses yet in my use thus far. The last topic to discuss here is the most simple and perhaps most boring, but one of the more significant differences between these two lenses, and that is the sharpness. The new Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master is a superbly sharp lens, all the way from 24 to 70 at f2.8, from edge to edge of the frame, is producing great images of extremely adequate quality. And when you stop it down, it's like a razor blade. It's, it's just so sharp. Um, in my full review, I'll include plenty of example images comparing kind of like how well it performs at certain focal lengths. However, it's a great lens and I can't really complain about it thus far in my experience with it. Been very happy. With that said, the original Sony 24 to 70 G Master, you can watch my original review of it in my opinion still holds. It's optically a great lens, it's aged well. The only thing I've noticed is certainly at 70 millimeters, it's a little bit weaker at f2.8 at the edge of the frames. However, realistically speaking, when I'm shooting at f2.8, I'm going for already a shallow depth of field where focus isn't my primary concern. So this lens never let me down. I was never really complaining about the, the image quality with regards to sharpness it was creating. So it's certainly still a good lens. It still holds up on 50 megapixel sensors in my opinion. And I, I would still use it for my professional work if I didn't have the new version of this lens. So the new one is better, the old one is great. So it's kind of like comparing something really competent to something pretty much perfect. Again, it's a great, great to have, 
not necessarily needed. So always at the end of the day, what it comes down to is a price and probably one of the best things about the new lens coming out is the fact that the old one has gotten cheaper. If you want to pick this up new, it sells for 1700 US dollars or 2000 Canadian. If you want to pick it up on the secondhand market, it's probably way cheaper because people are selling this lens because they got the new one and it just has less value than it used to because it's outdated. The Mark II lens comes in at 2300 US dollars or 3000 Canadian, which is a rather significant price point considering it is a 24 to 70 lens. You're spending a lot of money on that now. So it kind of, the price and value is dependent from person to person. For myself, I obviously made the upgrade and I'm in a situation where I'm using it professionally, so I could. However, if you're looking for a value lens, the old lens might be that for you. Now that I kind of have put all the cards on the table, I'll try and summarize my thoughts. And the new Sony 24-70 to G Master is incrementally a better lens and all these changes cumulatively add up to making it an absolutely superb lens. Like in every way, it's all that I wanted from a 24-70. to it's, it's compact, sharp, great autofocus and just is really easy to use and pairs really nicely with this compact Sony bodies and really highlights all the things that make the Sony mirrorless system what it is. With that said, it's just incrementally better than the previous version. And if you watch my original review of this lens, my biggest complaint in that video was like, when is Sony gonna upgrade this lens? Cause it's due for an upgrade two years ago. And in the two years I used it, I really fell in love with it. It, it was a great lens. Again, the optical performance was nothing to complain about. It just physically is rather robust and is bigger than it needs to be. And just always felt a little mismatched on my camera. So this upgrade is a welcome, welcome one, but not necessarily needed. And I'd be happy to continue using this one if I didn't get the new 24 to 70. With that said, Cameron and Sigma have both come out with great options that are alternatives to this older lens, which might take away from it being a great value from a certain perspective, though I have no difficulty recommending it if you're considering this lens. So yeah, still a great lens, it's just the new one is better, and that's not surprising. But that's gonna be it for the video. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have, or if you have any comments on anything I said, any thoughts that I missed, um, I'd be happy to hear about them just because, yeah, I'd be happy to have a discussion or for other people to see them. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in my next video.